Welcome back to the Kaiser Report. I'm Max Kaiser, special in-studio guest today, Senator Mike Gravel. Senator Gravel was the U.S. Senator for Alaska from 1969 to 1981. He ran for the nomination for president in 2008, first for the Democratic ticket and then the Libertarian. Uh, he is the author of Citizen Power Mandate for Change and devotes his time advocating direct democracy initiatives. Mike, welcome to the Kaiser Report. Thank you for having me, Mike. I want to talk to you about uh, 1971 when you read the Pentagon Papers into the public record for, from the floor of the Senate. Now, how was that received at the time by your fellow senators, and how would you relate that to WikiLeaks today? What WikiLeaks is doing today is better than what we were doing with the Pentagon Papers. The Pentagon Papers was the history of how three presidential administrations had lied to the American people about going in to Vietnam and then staying there and killing, uh, what, three million Southeast Asians, 58,000 Americans. And I want to say, Max, they all died in vain. Vietnam is still a communist country, has most favored trading relationship with us. You can buy Baskin Robbins, Kentucky Fried Chicken, uh, and uh, in, in either Hanoi or uh, Ho Chi Minh City. Okay, so uh, WikiLeaks, again, now we've been, it's been attacked financially, something kind of a financial blockade, something new in this digital globalized world by major corporations like PayPal and Visa who've cut the company off from the financial grid. So they really, it's something back in the Pentagon Papers day they couldn't have done because the system wasn't designed as such. But these corporations now can push a button and excommunicate an entire organization who's not been charged with anything. They just decided on a corporate basis it's convenient for them to get rid of them. It's the government that's pressuring these uh, institutions to do that. So they're doing the bidding of the government. But where do you draw the line between the government and corporations, Mike? I mean, oh, I because... don't. I don't. Okay, so there, we can't really say it's, it's not the one government. one in the same. So these major corporations, Visa, MasterCard, the, the people supplying the predatory lending into the system, they're controlling the outcome of what happens on uh, on the policy initiatives in Washington. And there's no government. There's no representative government. There's nobody there uh, standing up for the rights of the people. You know that. I know that. Everyone knows that. It's a farce. It's corporatism. Totally. And it's worldwide. I don't know, Max, if you're aware of this new study that came out of Zurich where they examined 43,000 corporations, you know about it, and it filtered down to 1,350 corporations with interlocking directorates and relationships, and they control 60% of the world's wealth. Now, that's clearly a problem of that requires trust busting, as Teddy Roosevelt once was More saying. More than trust busting. Okay, talk More to than you. trust busting, because you're operating within the confines of representative government. And when you go there, you don't have a chance to bring about change. You want to bring about change, you've got to bring the people into the operation of government independent of representative government so that the people can make laws. There's only two venues for change. One is the government wherein the problem exists. The other is with the people. But the people need procedures to act upon the knowledge they have. And that has to be procedures that permits them to be lawmakers. Cicero, Marcus Cicero over 2,000 years ago said, liberty, freedom, is participation in power. If you don't participate in power, you are not free, and that applies to all the countries in the world, including Switzerland, because where you do have direct democracy in Switzerland and in some American states, it's controlled by representative government. And that's why I emphasize that it's got to be done independent of representative government. And I have legislation that I've worked on. It took me seven years to write it. And, and it can be applied in any country in the world, and it would empower people by going around the government. I have no confidence that the government would ever, ever empower the people. Okay, so this is what you're into now, direct democracy. My whole life is in there. Okay, and as you've just described it, you are globetrotting with a uh, basically uh, a do-it-yourself kit, how you too can be democratic. If you follow these simple flat pack kind you're, of- You're right. It's like an Ikea. You know, you simply put it, you can screw it, it's simple. Here's the simple, you take the best, I would assume, from what the founding fathers of the US had to offer, and you mix it on with some other Cicero and a few other um, bright minds from the from the ages, and you go into and you go into these countries. Uh, you're going. You're all over the world with this. You're all over the world. How is it, who, I, I what countries three, are respe I, receptive and what's been not receptive? First off, it's receptive by the bottom of the pyramid. People know at the bottom of the pyramid they're being screwed by the system. 
And so, okay, take a good example like Egypt. Okay, they just had a revolution. Oh. They've been in control of a client state. Mubarak is controlled by America. They want democracy. There now, would you go in there to Cairo? Have you gone in there? Have they looked at it? What's the no? Is that I've a good not place? gone into Egypt. I would not do that. Egypt is controlled by the military, and our military controls their military because we've been feeding their military two billion dollars a year. But for where the does life. our military not control some country somewhere? Where can you go? I mean, some Fiji or some island in the Caribbean? And where is it not? Disneyland and Euro? Where is it not controlled? I'll tell you the truth, I don't know where to go, <laughs> and that's the reason why I'm so concerned. Because we saw you on the street here. We said, "Hey, that's Mike Gravel. What's he doing?" down there. He's trying to get democracy started. We said, come on up and be on the show. Here you are. So in other words, you can't get this message out. I promised the Occupy group in Switzerland, Zurich, that I'll come back next spring. And what they'll do, they're supposed to be taking a vote. And if they decide they want to do it, what I can do is I can read your constitution, French constitution, German, and turn around and take this legislation that I've drafted and I can tweak it for your constitution and then give it to you and then you go out on the street and get the people to vote for it. You don't go to the government. You go around the government, you ask the people. And here's where the rubber hits the road. And that is when the people vote for this, that means the majority of the people in France, if they wanted to be empowered to make laws, they would then vote, not, not sign a petition, not to respond to a poll, actually vote and we count the votes and they're registered and when you have more than 50 percent of the registered voters vote for this it is automatically the law of the land which means that the minute you bring the people into the operation of government what they become is the senior partners and anybody who knows about structure of, of business knows the senior partner is the senior partner and commands what will happen. So it's a win-win. The representative government will do a better job in a day-to-day -day operation of government, but the people will set the policy designed to satisfy their needs. And we want to talk about Occupy Wall Street because you've written about this, and so fill us in on your thoughts. It is actually a miracle. It's a miracle that started with young, uh, young kids, and not so young. Uh, they're on the cutting edge of social change. What this is demonstrating is that there's a deep-seated unhappiness in the populace. It's, it's like a boil. This is the tip of the iceberg you're seeing. And I've gone to the one in Switzerland. I've gone to the, last night. I went to La Défense and, and did it here and just told them I honor their efforts. However, there is a problem. Protest movements generally do not succeed because they, the, as they fly in the face of the police power of government, they get crushed. And the more effort they make, the more brutal is the crushing. So what they need to do is, over time, they need to be able to turn this around into an actionable item. Forget all the details of the agenda. Just go after one thing. Well, initially, not having an actionable agenda or item was the good thing about it because people it wasn't shot down immediately ideologically speaking they just built a big tent they built a big constituency okay now you're saying at some point they've actually got to have at least one item on the agenda what is that item to empower themselves to make laws because if they get the meta legislation i'm talking about they can address their agenda I mean, let, me, let me cut in for a second so you talk about changing the law people have the ability to change the law this is what they should be working toward on the other side of the aisle, uh, there seems to be no problem in the ability for banks and others to change laws on, on a whim. For example, just in the last couple of months, Goldman Sachs, uh, they broke the law when they offered insiders a chance to own Facebook stock, above and beyond what the SEC allows them to in terms of a limited number of people eligible for this before the company posts their financials. So their response was, well, we're going to do it anyway. And the SEC's response was, well, maybe we need to change the law. And this is what you hear almost every single week is an instance where the banks on Wall Street, Goldman, J.P. Morgan, and the rest, they break the law. They break the securities laws. They break all the, they break major nothing, fundamental regulations. And their answer do. always is, well, you're, the laws aren't catching up to what we're doing as financial engineers. You know, the law needs to change because we're making a market. We're, we're creating the opportunity. Why, why can't somebody just simply say, look, you're breaking the law and you need to be prosecuted. You can't claim that your defense is that the law hasn't caught up with your genius yet. That's the defense of a serial killer and a psychotic. When the people make the laws, 
they will then be able to enforce the law. And how you do it, give me an example. Supposing the people make the law to go ahead and require that banks no longer are sustained by the government. What will happen? Well, once the people have this power, they will not be denied. You see young kids taking to the streets now, but when you get Americans, 60 plus million Americans voting to empower themselves to make laws, I gotta tell you, I know from personal experience, Politicians are cowards, and judges are even more cowardly than politicians. And so you now empower the people that politicians will shape up immediately and recognize that they will handle day to day. Let the people handle the policy. The first thing you do is stop corporations from being treated like a human being. In the constitutional amendment I have, it says that money for an initiative, for or against, can only come from a natural person. What does that mean? That all these unnatural people with all this power to steal and break the law, they can no longer get involved in the lawmaking process, which they do right now because they own the Congress, they own all the governments. Okay, so uh, we've got about a minute left. To summarize, you've been working on this Direct Democracy Project for a number of years, and you a see generation. with this Occupy movement really a golden opportunity for the, the realization of, of these ideals. With the, this group, these people now are, are just, are just uh, begging to, to retake back their, their, their democracy and their rights, and so you're really enthusiastic by this, right? And in, in up to now, I've never really had any hope that other than scratching away and being lucky that we could bring it about. But now when I see the Occupy movement rising like a phoenix from nowhere and worldwide immediately, and it'll, it'll get legs in depth. And as that, that's the crisis I've been waiting for to now push the national initiative and say, the answer is not to protest, the answer is to make yourself lawmakers. And then when they realize that, it's Katie bar the door. Up until now, I exist on a basis of I have faith that when we reach critical mass, the corporations will wake up and say, my God, what's going on? It'll be too late. The people will know this, and you won't have to sell it to the people. They'll just want it. All right, Mike Ravel, it sounds, uh, sounds good because clearly you've got your um, expertise mixed with this whole generation of, of this movement is on the street and ready to go. So uh, there's a tinderbox ready to explode, hopefully for the greater good. That's right, and it won't explode in a violent way. It'll explode in an evolutionary way, and that's the way it should happen. Senator Mike Gravel, thanks so much for being on the Kaiser Report. Max, thank you for having me. All right, super, and that's going to do it for this edition of the Kaiser Report with me, Max Kaiser, and Stacey Herbert. And I want to thank my guest, Senator Mike Gravel. If you want to send me an email, please do so at kaiserreport at rttv.ru. Until next time, this is Max Kaiser saying bye, y'all.